Hi guys, it is an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in the paradise of East Bumblefuck, New Mexico. Good lord, and uh, I have got to uh, get out and celebrate this glorious Thursday, May 11th, Humpty Dumpty Tribe's sixth birthday by getting out there and digging into a monster pile of horse shit to uh, get to work in my organic garden planting. It's time to plant them maters and peppers and melons and cucumbers and all the good stuff. But speaking of uh, shoveling horse shit, before I dive into that horse shit, I need to... Uh, dive into my weekly Dump the Trumpty Hive Roundup rant. And I've made the horrible uh, judgment call of I'm actually bringing you this rant on a full stomach. On a full stomach. So I don't know uh, as I get into this that I might hurl projectile vomit all over the camera and all over Sancho Panza. So I'm apologizing in advance if I if I do hurl during this. Do not ever, do not ever, guys, uh, attempt to, to to look at, at, at a picture of, of this fucking gargoyle. Listen to one squeak out of his big foot and mouth on a full stomach. It's not it, it's not a good idea, but uh, I'm already feeling this uh, you, you know that feeling you get on the back of your tongue just just thinking about Donald Trump, you know that feeling that you get right before you're getting ready to vomit is the feeling that I'm getting in my tongue as I as I just think about talking about Donald Trump, uh, so let me get the over. Let me get this over with as soon as I can, and then go guzzle a uh, a bottle of Pepto Bismol, and uh, go start shoveling horse shit. Uh, but anyway, before we get into the uh, the obvious. The obvious Dump the Trump de Hive story of the week, the only story on the mainstream media in, in a minute. This one, this particular, I, I just want to lead off with this story, and we're going to have a pop quiz. Okay. What is, now this is pure stream of consciousness. Don't sit here and think about it. This is just, just, an, just a visceral reaction. What is the first word that comes to your mind when someone says to you, Donald Trump? Okay. If the word was idiot, if the word was idiot, uh, you actually, uh, I don't know if you get a gold star or not, uh, let's see, I don't know if that's a gold star to be, to agree with more people in a poll than any other word. The most common word associated with Donald Trump, according to a new poll, is idiot. This is whatever, a Kenny Pack University poll, uh... According to that, they asked the question, what is the word that comes to mind when you think of Donald Trump? The most common responses were idiot, incompetent, and liar. Idiot coming in at 39 times, incompetent 31, liar 30 times, unqualified 25 times, ignorant 16 times, egotistical, 
15 times. Other popular ones were, and this was my pick, Asshole. Asshole uh, was a popular choice. Stupid, Arrogant, Bully, and Trying. Trying. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? We have racist, we have bigot, we have buffoon, we have clown, con man, crazy, despicable, dictator, deceive, embarrassment, evil, greedy, inexperienced, disaster, dishonest, disgusting, Arrogant? Did I already say that? Uh, anyway, I think we get the point. So anyway, of course, guys, uh, I just had to had to start off with that story. Of, and obviously, the number one story on the planet, hands down, the only story on planet Earth, is uh, is Donald Trump firing FBI. <laughs> Director James Comey, which is somewhat like uh, Tweety Bird firing Sylvester the Cat, is uh, as Jimmy Kimmel said last night, it's what dictators do. It is what dictators do. So, uh, of course, the number one story on planet Earth after the mainstream media has had how many days to digest this uh, no shit Sherlock. Uh, announcement that uh, that Tweety Bird has has fired Sir Sylvester the Cat, or the Roadrunner has fired Wile E. Coyote. Uh, the mainstream media has put all its brains together to, to 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 announce to the world in its number one story that the reason the reason Donald Trump fired FBI Director James Comey was because. James Comey was investigating Trump's links to Russia. Oh, shit. Wow! Never would have thought of that. And so I'm just going to touch on a few of these stories. This is from Jill Abramson in The Guardian. This is, so, this is what, from across the pond looking at this, Firing Comey won't save Trump from the flames of the Russian scandal. This is Nixonian. Nixonian. Don't you love that word? Nixonian. This is Nixonian, was the reaction of Senator Bob Casey of Pennsylvania to the news that Tweety Bird had fired Sylvester the Cat. Uh, Casey uh, was echoed by fellow Democrats as referring to that infamous Saturday night massacre when President Richard Nixon fired the special prosecutor and attorney general who were leading the Watergate investigation. The massacre did not derail the probe. It only fueled calls for Nixon's impeachment. And we know that Donald Trump has a stunning ignorance of history. There you go. So it's certainly possible that Trump does not know the lessons of Watergate. The most famous lesson being that the cover-up is always worse than the crime. So uh, a whole new... Uh, round of uh, furor about uh, the impeachment of Donald Trump. Uh, hallelujah. So, you know, I, I'm continually in this dump the Trump the hive roundup round. I'm going over there looking at the, the odds, you know, the bookies. So what has happened to the odds? And just in the past couple of days that Donald Trump uh, will be impeached. According to the bookies, Donald Trump now has a 60% chance, 
a 60% chance of being impeached after firing James Comey. Uh, as Donald Trump's firing of Comey has seen the odds on his impeachment slashed to their shortest ever price as uh, the odds have been cut from 10 and 11, 10, 11 to 4, 6. Yep, yep, yep. Let's all hope. Uh, that was in England. I thought that they go and, and look at the, the betting house in England. Uh, anyway, they go through all of these, uh, a bunch of different betting houses. Uh, this is one of these bookies. Quote, Donald Trump to be ousted from the White House before he finishes his first term has been a popular bet since he came into power. However, following these recent actions, there's been a surge of activity for this, this impeachment or sacking, whatever you call it, to happen before the end of this year. Okay. Let's see, what is U.S. Labor Secretary? Um, uh, who the fuck is the, uh, I I anyway, Donald Trump impeachment, a quote, real and growing possibility, oh, says former U.S. Labor Secretary. I was hoping it was it was Trump's own Labor Secretary. No, it's uh, former Labor Secretary, uh, Mark Senator Mark Warner. Donald Trump is unlikely to finish his term as president, according to the leading Democrat on the committee looking into alleged Russian interference in the U.S. election. Um, Senator Mark Warner, the vice chairman of the Senate Intelligence Committee, privately told friends he puts the odds at two to one against the president completing his term. The New Yorker has reported. All right, here from the Independent Member of Congress, members of Congress, quote, holding secret conversations about removing Donald Trump from office. <clears throat> members of the U.S. Congress are holding, quote, private conversations about whether Donald Trump should be removed from uh, office, uh, and this was before this was before the Comey shit. Uh, after a difficult first 100 days that have seen the U.S. president mired in a string of scandals and mishaps, as I say, not even counting the Tweety Bird Sylvester mishap, senators and congressmen last week were said to be considering whether he will last a full term. Yes. Uh, quote, this is, who is this? Evan Osnos, the author uh, of this article. I guess this is the same article in the New Yorker told MSNBC, quote, this, this impending collapse of Donald Trump is a conversation that people are having around the dinner table. It's one people have at the office. Members of Congress are talking about it in private. And the question is very simple. Is this a president who is able to do his job and able to go the distance? This 
is a president who is beset by doubts of a completely different order of any president we have seen. The truth is that there are people having an active conversation about whether or not he will last. Oh God, guys, here I go. Here I go. Will Donald Trump last four years in office for, for whatever reason? Uh, impeachment, 25th Amendment, uh, just quitting the job, heart attack, or bullet through the head. Uh, okay. Hambone Little Tail in, in a rare, in a rare uh, in, in foray into optimism and probably clueless optimism, Donald Trump will not last four years for whatever reason. And uh, will he last one year? Uh, wow, this is really getting tough, guys. I'm, you know, I'm so careful not to go out on limbs like this. Uh, okay, as much as this uh, really makes me want to vomit to say this, Donald Trump will last one year, but he ain't going to last four. Uh, he's, th th this motherfucker has committed more gaffes and he has committed more impeachable offenses, more 25th Amendment offenses, uh, in, in, since January 20th than every president combined for the last 30 years, if you took every president for 30 years, added up their uh, impeachable offenses and, and reasons to get rid of them, Donald Trump, in, in, since January 20th, uh, is, is guiltier of more than, than everyone combined. The motherfucker has got to go. How many times have we seen this tired old story? How Donald Trump could get fired, the 25th Amendment. Now I will uh, make this, this uh, no-brainer uh, prediction that assuming Donald Trump does go down, it will not be by the 25th Amendment. Here he is. Oh, Matt By. So, uh, how is Matt By weighing in on this? Uh, I think Matt does his Trump rant each Thursday also. I'm pretty sure Matt and I do. So this is Matt's uh, spin on this. Trump's real undoing may be the creeping fatigue. We'll see about that. Is he talking about the creeping fatigue of Trump, of Trump supporters, or uh, of people who hate Trump? All of us are getting fatigued by this guy. Uh, I was six years as Matt by I was six years old when Richard Nixon resigned the presidency on a sweltering August day. Uh, blah blah blah. One of his earliest memories is about Nixon's uh, almost certain impeachment. Uh, so he talks about. Uh, Nixon, uh, I should have read. I should have read this before I got into this. Uh, okay, let's just get some of the quotes. 
for the first few months, this constant provocation up until now, up until this latest gaffe, uh, this constant provocation was simply disorienting, like getting hit by a flying brick every morning. <laughs> yes. Uh, there you go. And... Uh, If Americans, just talking about all the goddamn drama, it's that Trump can't stand to simply exist for five minutes. His need is overpowering. His insecurity, limitless. Do I think Donald Trump fired Comey because he had not managed to create some all-consuming controversy in a week? No. Clearly Comey was not hearing the order to stand down, and Trump is not used to being challenged by the people he employs. But do I think he pulled the trigger when he did because he, meaning Trump, wasn't dominating the narrative. Yes, if Trump is not holding an audience, dread envelops him. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. So where are we with Donald Trump, according to Matt Bai? Maybe that's where we are with Trump. Maybe he is our political myth, the egomania, the rashness, the multi-front war on everyone in his way and some who aren't. This is not sustainable in a country that cares about other things. I once heard a criminologist uh, suggest that, in a way, methamphetamine was a less harmful drug than heroin. That's because a person can exist on heroin uh, for a long time, just sort of lolling around. But meth brings you to the bottom in a hurry. The addiction is shorter, the collapse and recovery unavoidable. Yes. Uh, so, if you believe, as I do, that Trump is unlikely to govern well in any event, you should be glad to see him fire Comey. Yes. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And the further his approval ratings drop, the further members of his own party will run in the other direction, leaving Trump isolated and diminished. And the sooner, perhaps, this particular nightmare will abate. There you go. Okay, from Matt By to Vox org. I like Vox. Here's the No Shit Sherlock button. After 100 days, Donald Trump's New World Order looks like the old New World Order. Yes. Uh, you know, just talking about this is just one more uh, the, about the vast gulf, the vast gulf between Trump's words and his deeds extends way beyond Israel, and it's the single most important thing to understand about the way the new president has been approaching the world.
from North Korea to China to NATO. Trump has talked about jettisoning the Obama administration's foreign policy and replacing it with something far more aggressive. And from North Korea to China to NATO, he has not done so. Instead, Trump has largely kept those policies in, in place. And there you go. Uh, and then he goes on, it just goes on and on. And of course, all about the goddamn globalist bankers and everything else that, uh, anyway, I, I think we get this. You know, the majority of these stories could have shown up in my uh, Saturday Clueless Moron or Roundup Rant. This one from Good Morning America. President Trump expected to launch commission on, quote, election integrity. Uh, <laughs> he's expected to sign an executive order today. Uh creating the Presidential Commission on Election Integrity. Yes, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, just putting the words election and integrity next to each other is, is every bit as, as blackly uh, hilarious is, is the UN putting the words sustainable development together. Election integrity. Moving on. White House says Trump will quote fully eliminate global threats to U.S. Uh, of, of course, uh, uh, of course, when Donald Trump is, is talking about how he's going to eliminate all of the threats to the U.S., uh, he does not consider climate change to be a threat to the U.S. Anyway, let's see. Well, here's, here's something uh, I might actually be agreeing with Donald Trump on. Trump urges future, urges future government shutdown. There you go. We could start by shutting down the White House. U.S. President Donald Trump came to office promising that he would produce so much winning that he would produce so much winning that Americans would be sick of it. And as he struggles to produce wins, some signs of frustration are starting to appear. Yes, uh, do, do you think so? I love that. Promising that he would produce so much winning that Americans would be sick of it. Uh, I know uh, that, that I'm one American sick of how much winning uh, Donald Trump has been doing. Uh, I'm not sure what this has to do with Donald Trump cheering on the shutdown of the federal government. Uh, anyway, they, they go on and I, I, I wish I... I just don't have time. This this goes on and on and on, and I'm trying uh, to figure out uh, why Donald Trump is is urging the uh, shutdown of the federal government. But my I've been distracted by a photo. Wedding photographer did not mean to capture that. Uh, <laughs> this truly is a classic photo. But anyway, moving on. Uh, <laughs> let's see. 
Let's move on to the business page. What the business page is talking about Donald Trump today. Trump cuts spark fears of global tax war. Donald Trump's plans to slash corporate taxes in the United States have sparked concerns of a new, new global fiscal race to the bottom, possibly involving a wave of negative social consequences, experts say. Yes. Uh, the long-anticipated uh, overhaul could face stiff opposition in Congress, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the plans have also raised eyebrows at NGOs and nonprofit organizations. Uh, this is Oxfam spokeswoman, man and Aubrey, quote, when the world's most powerful country decides to slash tax revenues as much as this, a number of other countries may follow suit, bringing with it imbalances that will have enormous uh, impacts on our societies. She said, falling tax revenues would make it harder for governments to pay for welfare, health care, and other benefits without going too deep into the red. Uh, no shit, Sherlock. Uh, Britain is also planning to cut its corporate tax rate. Uh, Anyway, just looking for some more good quotes. Uh, according to the U.S. think tank, the Tax Policy Center, Trump's plans could reduce Washington's budget by as much as $6.2 trillion over the next decade and massively push up the U.S. public debt by $20 trillion. Yep, yep, yep. This is, uh, we're going to wrap up with the uh, Trump and his drill, baby drill. We're going to do a little Trump roundup of Trump in bed with the fossil fuel industries. Four stories. We're going to start out here with the center for Public Integrity. I love it. The Center for Public Integrity uh, looking at uh, oil, gas, and coal interest filling Donald Trump's swamp with cash. President Donald Trump's swamp is particularly rich in fossil fuels. Oil gas, and coal interest together poured millions of dollars into Trump's inaugural fund and re-energized their federal government lobbying efforts during his first three months, according to a Center for Public Integrity analysis of federal disclosures. Uh, it's a two-pronged strategy that's apparently paying dividends. The new administration has spent its early days ticking items off the industry wish list. Uh, in all, oil, gas, and coal companies uh, contributed more than one out of every $10 raised for Trump's inauguration uh, and that's significantly more than the one dollar the sector contributed for every thirty-four dollars of Barack Obama's inauguration. Meanwhile, the oil and gas industry spent thirty-six million dollars on federal lobbying efforts from January first to March thirty-first 
that's an 11 percent increase over the same period last year. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, let's go over to EcoWatch. EcoWatch, what do they have to say about Donald Trump this week? Trump or order could open up area larger than Yellowstone to drilling. No shit, Sherlock. An investigation by Greenpeace published Wednesday by Bloomberg has revealed that more than 2.7 million acres of iconic U.S. land could be at risk from fossil fuel exploration following Donald Trump's decision to review the protection on dozens of national monuments. Yes. Uh, this is uh, Greenpeace spokesperson Trav Travis Nichols. Instead of protecting them, meaning these national monuments and other public lands, Trump wants to carve up these beautiful lands into corporate giveaways for the oil and gas industry. This out-of-touch billionaire may be about to hand over America's national treasures to the same industry that is already putting them at risk by fueling more climate change. Yep, I've already mentioned this story, but it bears repeating. Groups sue to stop Trump from renewing offshore drilling. Environmental and Alaska Native groups sued on Wednesday to maintain a U.S. ban on oil and gas exploration for most of the Arctic Ocean and areas of the Atlantic after President Donald Trump took steps to put the waters back in play for offshore drilling. There you go. And we're going to wind up this week's Dump the Trump D High Roundup Rant with this story, many versions of this story. This is the independence version of this story. Fossil fuel champion chosen by Donald Trump to run his renewable energy office. <clears throat> Donald Trump has chosen a champion of fossil fuels to run the federal government's renewable energy office. This is Daniel Simmons will be the new acting assistant secretary. I didn't even realize there was still remaining an Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. Uh, the appointment is the latest in a string of appointments of climate science deniers and people with links to fossil fuel companies to key positions in the Trump administration. Uh, there you go. Uh, speaking of fossil fuel and planinators, we have, it sounds like we have a chainsaw and a chipper. We have a, chain, a gasoline powered chainsaw and a chipper here in the peaceful bivouac of rural East Bumblefuck, New Mexico, where I fled Austin, Texas to get back to the peace and quiet of paradise. Uh, but with that, I am going to stop shoveling this horse shit and get out the wheelbarrow and the shovel and head back back to the garden on this 
gorgeous spring day in paradise as the chippers and the chainsaws crank up. Bye guys.